Hello again, welcome to another episode of Why Is That in the Bible, or Why Is This in the Bible? And today we're going to talk about the idea of details. There's things in the Bible that are explained in great detail. Uh, like, in some times it can, be, it can be so boring, like, <laughs> wonder why God put so much detail. Like, for instance, in the, the, uh, the book of Ezekiel is 48 chapters long. And the last eight chapters of the book of Ezekiel are solely dedicated, almost completely dedicated, to the description of this temple that's going to be built. And, and it goes into all this detail of, the, of how big the rooms here were, and this room over here, and this, this passageway. And it's, it's, it's a huge description, eight chapters, and, uh, <laughs> which is going to be interesting because in, in my teaching at, at my church, um, we've been working our way through the book of Ezekiel. So eventually I'm going to have to start preaching from those chapters. And it's, going to be a, it's going to be a bit of a challenge because you know, all that detail like, uh, of, of the little nitty gritty things. And it's the same in the Old Testament, like in the, in the, the book of Exodus, there's a description of the tabernacle and of the, the garments that are going to be worn. And, and, and there's descriptions in other books as well. I mean, different places in the Bible have these, these very detailed accounts. In the book of Acts, uh, Stephen, the, the, uh, the deacon, he's put on trial. And when he gives his trial, the longest single soliloquy of the, of the New Testament is given in his trial where he gives... His ex, he goes through the whole, basically the whole story of the Old Testament in a summary form, but still takes a lot of space for him to go into all the detail of all these things in his defense. And uh, it's interesting. God put that in there for some reason. Even, even those little details of what the, the ephod of the priest should look like. He did that for some reason. And we tell people as pastors, you should read that. You should read all the Bible. Read it all. Um, I wonder why God put that level of detail in there. Let them construct a sanctuary for me, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I am going to show you, as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture, just so you shall construct it. They shall construct an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, and one and a half cubits wide, and one and a half cubits high. You shall overlay it with pure gold, inside and out you shall overlay it, and you shall make a gold molding around it. You shall cast four gold rings for it and fasten them to its four feet. And two rings shall be on the side of it and two rings on the other side of it. You shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark with them. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark. They shall not be removed from it. You shall put into the ark the testimony which I shall give you. Okay, so why do you think, I wonder, why are all those details in the scripture, all that detailed information about the priests and the Ark of the Covenant and the temples and the, the things and all the stuff that's in there? Um, well, well, I guess one of the most obvious answers up front is just it was instructions to those people at the time. Like, they needed to know what to do. And so God said, do this, and here's exactly what you need to do. You know, the instructions of the ark that Noah built, like, do it, build it like this. <laughs> you know, it's something Noah had never done. He kind of needs to know what to do. And so God was like, this is it. This is what you should do. And so I guess he kind of really needed to pay attention, make sure he got that right, because his life kind of depended on it. It was an instruction manual to him. And I guess in the same way, the same for those that were making the garments for the priests or building the temples, like, here's what you need to do. Like, this is your instruction manual. Follow this. And so, you know, to some degree, those things are in the Bible because we're not the only ones that read the Bible. They also read these scriptures and they needed to know. And so at the time it was being lived, well, they wanted to have a good guide as to what to do. And so there's that. Now, we might be tempted to think as a result of that, well, that, that means nothing to me, so I guess I can skip that part. But the, we're told in the Bible that, that the whole Bible is profitable for teaching and reproof and rebuking and encouragement and building up the body. And, and so the whole scripture is profitable to the church today. So even those, those you know, seemingly tedious details of the temple are useful to us. And so, well, how do we understand those? And that's a little more tricky. Sometimes, I'm not going to speak for every single one of them, but, for, but sometimes what you'll find in some of those is there's actually a lot of symbolism intentionally placed there by God. 
he asked for those things, he commanded for those things to be built certain ways because they demonstrate it symbolically, demonstrate it certain things about the story, about God's character, about what God was doing in what the temple meant. And so, you know, the, the fact that there would be a certain type of oil used was giving us a message or that there was a certain type of a lamb that was going to use for the sacrifice. That, well, that was, there's a, a whole lot of symbolism in that. Uh, and and you, you'll find is that actually a lot of that symbolism has multiple meanings. So there was a symbolism for the thing itself, but then also the thing itself was symbolic of Christ or of God or his relationship with us. Even things like marriage is actually symbolic of our relationship with God or, or, or the church's relationship with Christ. And, and so we see there's a, a lot of rich symbolism in the thing and in the details of the thing. And so often we can read those things and, and take some time to study. It doesn't come easy. So you got to study it and research it. But as we look into it, you start to discover a richness of of communication there that God's giving us in a different way. One of the neat things about the Bible is there's a lot of different types of communication in it. There's poetry, there's history, there's, there's, there's metaphor and hyperbole, and there's, there's just parables and, and stories, and, and it's so neat. And sometimes just, just raw theology and teaching, and it's really neat. But then there's also that prophetic and symbolic stuff that's also inserted there sometimes, that we need to take the time to learn and, and to look into. And so some of the detail is there for that reason as well. And then there's also, there's also this, this general message that we get, especially in these, these, the details of the, of the temple and the, the sacrificial system and so on. There's a message there as well by God to his people, and it's, it's worth something for us to this day, a message there that says, when you're interacting with God's word, pay attention. Do not do it casually. And so when you're reading the scriptures next and you get to a place where there seems to be all this tedious detail, take your time and read through it anyway. And even if you can't find the symbolism or if you don't think, well, I'm never going to build an ark or whatever, as you're reading it, remember one of the messages that that moment will be for you is God saying, when you are dealing with me and what I say, don't just bypass it. Don't just look at it from the bird's eye level. Pay attention to the detail. Even if you don't understand it, let God's whole word go in. And so he's excruciatingly detailed sometimes. And he's saying, you can't just build a temple. Pay attention. Build it like this. Something when you're uh, reading the scripture yet next time, maybe, maybe that'll help you just remember that moment. And you just go, oh yeah, God, help me to to pay attention to the details of what you say.